with our chair and vice chair, are you vice chair? Yes. Of the um, Shelf of the Belfair Allen Citizen Advisory Committee on the Urban Growth Planning. And for the record, for those in the room, who state their names. Diedrich Allen. Debbie Riley. John Anther. Ken Van Buster. Pat Loudon. Jeff Chu. Paul Hawkins. Jeff Carey. Larry Fuller. Terry Jeffrey. Ray Devlin. First and foremost, thank you very, very much for your work on this committee. It's been for the unappreciated work of the Citizen Advisory Committee Board member. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and just share anything that you'd like to share with us. We've got kind of back and forth conversation now, but I'd like to give you the Oh, she wants to If I don't talk now, I won't get a chance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's hanging okay. around us too long. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, we had a briefing, and there were some questions about how, how they were doing and the directions that they were headed. And so I brought it back to the committee, and I said that maybe it'd be a good idea if, yeah. since the committee was appointed and never did actually meet with the board after that, that, that maybe we get together and they can talk about what they're doing to this point and maybe get some clarification from the board on what your ideas for when you put this group together on some of the things that they should be looking at to keep us from getting maybe off on tangents that we don't need to be going on or things that you do want to see or don't want to see. There was a list from the minutes that they had some questions that we can look at if you haven't already looked at those, or I can just let those get, let these guys kind of talk. But I think mainly what, what we're looking for is just a little bit of guidance on what you hope to get out of this group so that everybody understands from you what you're looking for. You got a copy of the resolution from Diane, right? Okay. I'll jump in first. <laughs> <laughs> The main purpose uh, behind the creation of it, of course, is exactly what it says in the resolution. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things people would like to do and stuff, but the main purpose of it is, as it says, uh, to establish a joint advisory committee for the Allen and Belvoir and Growth Areas to review the current plans and development regulations and make recommendations that create consistency for a more viable urban growth area. And, uh, to find recommendations to the commission or to the appropriate commission or committee as appointed by the commissioner of native merits. But for the most part, it is to look at those and uh, see in ways that you can help to unify it a little bit, change it to where it's more standard uh, and not so extreme from one to the other. Uh, now, me personally, I'm also, again, what I'm about to say though is my opinion, not what you were, you were tasked to do. One of the questions you came today uh, was this, what are you tasked to do? So that's what it has to do. I am hoping, though, that we find a way to uh, uh, look at some of the options to better use some of those structures uh, uh, to get more use out of those lands and, and promote economic development in the urban growth areas um, and help structure things in a way to where it won't, uh, it won't inhibit it. Uh, and also, if there's time, to make some other recommendations of the things that you would like to see uh, and some changes that you think might be beneficial for everybody that's outside of this if there's time. But of course, the main task is exactly as it was said in the resolution. So you have a question. I'm sorry, did you respond to Basically, I think there's a lot of frustration on the part of the committee about exactly what it is you want us to do. We also have a number of strong-willed individuals on the committee that I'm sure you're aware of since you all appointed them. Um, <laughs> it's a very subjective statement and I am not going to say it. <laughs> an assumption of who that might be. No, I, I'm, not <laughs> saying, I'm, not, I'm not pointing any fingers at anyone. That said, um, there's been a little bit of, of back and forth about that and just trying to get everybody on track about you know what the exact work plan is going to be. So what we've done is we've appointed a committee to deal with Allen and we're going to appoint a committee at the next meeting to deal with Belfair. We've increased the meetings from once a month to twice a month. 
and we feel like uh, once because we have a core people that are interested in welfare could care less about Allen. Some people in Allen don't, you know, they're not all that concerned about welfare. So what we want to do is get the people that care about one specific area, let them work on that area, and then you know, bring it all together and tie it up towards the end. So when you look at the, the request to um, standardize regulations between two areas, is that what happens when you bring them all together? Yes. From there? Yes. Well, so, oh, so, so the people of Allen will be reading the Belfer ones and looking at how they can, and the people from Belfer will be taking the Allen ones and looking at how they can bring them together? Uh, that wasn't exactly the plan, but that could work. But Jeff, Jeff has some ideas on this. I'm going to let him. You know, first of all, the committee's had four meetings since it was created, so it's just getting really, really going. And when I say really going, meaning into the really, really, really details. We created a subcommittee a couple meetings back to start addressing what we thought would be initially pretty easy. When I say easy, meaning we wouldn't have to get into the subreddit plans because we weren't looking at anything that changed the plans. We were looking at issues of how to consolidate the zoning development regulations between the two UGAs. And so we took the simplest, what, what we felt would be the simplest, where we could get the most agreement to begin with, and build from there. And that so was the like, first question, are you supposed to look at the plans and subarea plans? It, it, and that's, that leads to your question. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. well, yeah. people are wondering Right, and this, this, the questions a lot are coming out of the committee. There's some of us that are into it, and then there's, there's the committee. And it's, well, you know, like he's saying, there are struggling people, and then there's people that have a, that have been around this plan, these planning processes since, since the beginning, and some that have been in the last few years, and some that are just getting into it. So there's that kind of education issue going between the different members. But it's a little bit of educational learning curve for some of the members. So yeah. one of the problems you're running into, and I'm asking this, I think I, I know that it is, but I gotta ask it anyway. That you have you have some that want this to be a full sub area planning association or group that 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 mirrors what was done ten years ago and go through all those processes. Uh, but yet what we're asking for is more specific simplistic aspect on this particular committee. Is that one of the issues that's going on? It hasn't really been talked about. No, but I, I think that's an underlying I, yeah. theme. You know, I mean, I even press in that direction because I have, I mean, I have background. I, you know, I know some of the things that went into things and so, and as, even though we, I'm still educating myself as far as like looking at what the Department of Commerce has a 100 or 200 page document for Working with UGAs and what you know what they should include, and I kind of look at that. We didn't really do that. And it, this is elaborating what's worked and what's not worked throughout the state, and where things got in with you know the hearings board and where you know how they ruled and all those kind of things. So there's that part of me, but I ha I'm not hung up on that issue. I I want to see us first say okay, if we need to address it uh, again. We thought in the case of Allen. And I'm kind of sticking my nose in both, so I'm not tied to one or the other, so sticking my nose in both. Mainly to try to keep that, keep that commonality of thought that if we can combine things to make it more uniform, especially in zoning, you know, you don't have a chance. But um, like the, con the actual subway plans, like uh, one of the members body and I went down through it, and we thought, okay, that's, you know, there's not much when you look at it, at least look at the headings, no, we're not going to change much, but we got into it, and, and as I kind of reported up the line, I said, you know, 75% of this we can get through, you know, Bonnie and I can cut it out and have, you know, have it ready. And I said, there's 25% that is going to take some thinking. In other words, because you have things that have moved ahead. You've had things move ahead in the capital facility. You've had things move ahead in the, um, uh, the parks. In their complex, and they're not. Now they're not tied. It's like there was no consideration, and each time we do these different pieces, there's no consideration. Give me an example. Give me an example. Uh, well, name me a like the, the parks. Or, like you got a trails program. What was that? It's not how do you even call out in the Belfort. There's not even a reference really to it. There's child friendly, pedestrian friendly, those kind of things in the separate plan. But it doesn't talk about the areas we might approach 
you know, for the open space. They're not, they're not reviewed, they're not compared to each other. Or take capital facilities. And I, I mean, there's, there's so, so, so an example would be, there's a feasibility study done, and I honestly don't know if it's sitting for that. For the trail from, as you and yeah. I talked about, Portadown to yeah. Fulton Creek, yeah. that is not sitting in the Island Plan sub area yeah. plan. Yeah. Okay, see, that's the type of thing I think that our staff would should be working on. I mean, you know, and, and you had indicated that, that, you, that, and I don't know if she's told you this, but she's come to the commission and said, I can do the bare minimum to get us legal right. by the end of June, and anything more substantive than that we'll do afterwards. And so our, my hope was that, that, that those types of omissions would be found by the person at the plan, and you particularly, not this group. This group. Well, yeah, we did, I did not know. I, I, mean, I got that feeling from time to time, various conversations, um, but this first time anybody said it out loud. Right. right. Well, and, and I don't wrong, necessarily I, I, know, I, I don't know who had about that trail. Now. I mean, that wouldn't be something yeah. that I would find. But, but take that capital facilities. You got a mile and a half more of sewer in there than you originally had in the okay. original sewer plan. And the, some of that could be, you know, the way it's structured now. Yeah. It, 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 it is a little bit as simple as it's addressing. It. But uh, you know, we can add a little bit in there if we start to look at it a little bit differently. Uh, perhaps like the shoreline master plan update go through all this process, everybody created this great document, and then we figure out at the end, you know, what actually was broken, because you're actually supposed to be uh, putting in the stuff that... Well, that you know, that's the biggest question. Anymore. What's the problem we're trying to solve here? Yeah. And what are we trying to fix? We, we've, some of us... So, so this, this committee was to have solved this problem. Yes. The fact that we have Much other very problems. different <laughs> zoning and, and development right. codes, and there's probably a chance to make these more consistent. Yes. And that's what this committee was charged with. Our okay. staff should be charged with updating the plan. The stuff that's not in there that should be 1,500 miles or 1,500 feet of, of sewer. One and a half miles. That's what our staff should be doing, in my opinion. If staff saying that she needs help identifying those, maybe, you know, the group of volunteer citizens to read through the plan and go, you know what we don't have in there? No, it's not called <laughs> out, but it's kind of, and I don't want to go down the tip cap road, around, but. To me, when this this process is done, what I'm, you know, I have in the back of my mind proposing to this is that the county set up like a three-year review, so that when you come to the tenth year, you already, if you do it every three, you come up the ninth year, you're reviewing, and when you come to the comp plan year, you're ready to make adjustments. Because, for example, nobody understands really the nature of the Allen UJ. It wasn't until I stated something just this last meeting. Uh, he was surprised. Other people were surprised. We came across some data. You know, in this country, you're lucky to get 65% home ownership. Okay? In Allen, it's almost 95%. Now, 20, about 30% of that is people that don't live here, there. But only 5%, only 5% is rentals. That is totally different dynamic. Well, it seems to me if the citizen comes across something like that, that they would ask that that be considered, because there is the option to update your plan, and that's, well, that's the land use now. We can be updating this sure. any time. It's just the mandatory every two years, you can right. hear right. it. So I think if we have this artificial, you know, rule that we can't touch it for 10 years. Right. <laughs> no, no, I'm not and, saying. And I think that these things ought to be iterative, and, and, yeah. and so that's why our hope is that our planning department would take this on more proactively, but as a citizen, yeah. I don't see why you know, that has a bearing on something right. on the plan that you wouldn't point that out. Right. The staff would take it to the planning commission, the planning commission would say, yeah, let's update the plan. To me, there would be nothing more in, in that concept, meaning, just say, you know, you have a couple meetings every three years, just go through a few meetings and take input from the community about what you see, is it working or not? Or just have an iterative process with the community. Well, one of the things that I, I do, I, you know, I, I've talked to Ken, you know, many times. What I, Ken would like to see an actual group put back together again that, that looks at that stuff. One of the problems I have with it is that has to be staffed, you know, sure. and then, for, you know, for what impact. And, right. uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to, how to get there, but that's two separate questions. That's not what this is. What this one is, uh, how I see it, one, one example, 
you have things in Allen that, that were in the plan that may not work. Right. There's something better in the Belfort plan. We try to take that one and put it towards the Allen plan to make it work. Same with Belfort. Right. I'm going to use two examples, and this is just my opinion, not you guys. The idea of business on top or business on bottom, residential on top, I think is a failure. Right. I think yeah. it's failed Allen. Yeah. Whatever you can take from the Belfort plan that would that would more unify that seems more realistic to right. me. Sure. This is an opportunity to do that. In Belfair, in the UGA, you have this issue where only so much of the ground can be covered. In the UGA, where you have zero lot line uh, uh, issue, you can build up to the lot line, but yet you can only use 45% of the thing. Lot. That makes no sense. You know, but yet in Allen, you're allowed a lot more usage. Yeah. Which one works better? You know, obviously that's a problem in Belfair. If you want to build homes up in, in an area and they can't pencil out because they only use 45% of the ground, including driveways and stuff like that, that failed. Especially since you have it zoned for high residential. That can't be because it can't pencil. Finding those two things that are different and finding out which one works the best and then pushing that forward. We, we, we did take, like I so said, we had the subcommittee, <coughs> the committee that addressed and took the what we call R1 in Allen, what you call R4 in Belfair. One name. <laughs> <laughs> one name. You know, once, I, yes. once I explained how it Common came, terminology. Once I came about, everybody just like loosened up and understood. It was like it switched gears. But I, I don't have a problem. I'm not hung up on that. But it took probably you know an hour for people to get up to speed on their own. And then three hours just hammered up that one zone where five of us went at it and just hammered it out. And we're hammered close. What? Just to clean up the zone. In other words, make call it. the same thing. Yeah, well, calling it can't, it doesn't work because what's in it, what's in the body of it isn't replaceable. In other words, you have to either sync up some things with Allen or sync up some things with Belfair to make it actually work as R4. And that's, yeah. Well, that's what we're asking. Yeah, that and that's what, what we do. But I'm saying we have to literally go down code by, you know, code by statement by statement in each zone to make sure that they correlate because you can't have two different meetings for the same thing. You don't want to go there either. <laughs> yeah, and it and it took some time to get everybody on the same page about what we're going to do here and how we're going to go about it. You know what Jeff is saying here. So there's been some time that's been spent on that, hadn't necessarily been productive time. So, and. I'd like to add something too, you know, the staff has worked really hard to try to help us. I think in, in a couple of instances, we've been our own worst enemy. So just, you know, I don't want you to judge them too harshly because I think they've really worked hard. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you folks understand. Yeah, I think we have a better grip on it now than we had getting it organized. Okay. But then I'm looking at these lists of questions, and do you still want us to address these? Sure. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want to... Okay. <coughs> Just briefly. I'm going to catch a few more little parts of this first. Uh, you know, uh, another example would be the idea that you can't have a lot larger than oh, yeah. such an alley. That, that makes no sense, because it also... Remembering that the urban growth areas of the board were supposed to have our growth. Right. Okay, so with that being said, we want to make it easier. But at the same time, if there's time, because this may not fit within right. what we're asked to do now, but if you could pull off, I would love to see somebody recommend to us the ability, for example, in the uh, Belfort urban growth area, in those areas that you have to have 10 homes, that it changes from, from uh, shall to should, and with the idea that it must still be divided 10, but they have the ability to use parts of it at a time. So this way you can have at least development can start to go forward. We're now, because we've created in such a manner that it has to be 10, with infrastructure, with everything you can't afford to do, it's not possible. So instead, the area that we want developed can't get developed. We've had a fairly in-depth discussion in that area. Yeah, we did. And, and we pushed on community development to come up with answers on certain things. Because we were seeing development currently ha happening where you have a zone for just to give a density, like in Lakeland Village. Uh, in a splattered portion, it was like six. And we had sections that were starting to bump up in the density like seven and a half. So the question came, okay, so, and then we had other areas that were 2.7. And that was fine too. And so it was like, okay, what's, I don't have a problem with it. 
either way, but I'm saying how, how, because people, you know, I mean, Jack is telling me when they go to look at certain layout plans that they have to hit that, in that case, that 10. I mean, it's a 10, you know, up to 10. And I'm saying, well, we got, you know, from 2.7 to 5 or 7.6 in a 6 zone. How, how do we work that? And, you know, I, I can't remember that we came up with an answer other than there didn't seem like there was anything in county rules and regs that was like that you absolutely had to do this. You know what I'm saying? That you're, and uh, let me hit on that because yeah. I agree. Uh, but here's the problem. The, the interpretation yes. at this time yes. it is. Yeah. So wouldn't it be wiser to change the verbiage to where the way, because even the people that attended that said that that's not the way it was supposed to be. Right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's where it is. Okay. So perhaps sure. the recommendation would be to change the verbiage so that you don't have that issue. Right. You know, uh, and then it unifies it. Right. That's just my, I mean, just but, a recommendation. I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. And we were just trying to figure, the problem that we were trying to push on uh, Community development on was in the back of my mind when you look at what like, the Department of Commerce is saying is like okay I kind of want to know what you know what the variable is going to be because you're trying to plan you know your infrastructure trying to plan all these different things that go in as part of the comp plan and a part of the zoning and part you know in other words and we never really got to an answer on it we've kind of let it more like you say like a shell we'll probably get to that point but um, it does affect you know how you try to plan density you know. How much sewer? How much water? How much roads? You know, to what level? <coughs> and so it's kind of a catch point too. On the one hand, you want it nice, where you got a number you can chew for. On the other hand, you need flexibility. And then how do you make that so you don't create a situation like where you have expensive utilities, like you know, you know the sewer and belfry. So uh, we're hammering out. Our biggest concern was a little bit of. You know, seeing like a schedule that was coming together like out of public works and seeing us and our work and it's like, holy crap, we're not going to hit that with, you know. Yeah, we're not going to get near that. And yet, and yet we, I think, I don't know any member there in the committee that doesn't feel that some or all of these different factors are important. Yeah. There's been no, I mean, there's disagreement about things, but there's not disagreement that to one degree or another all these things shouldn't be addressed. But what, what I'm concerned, you know, just, you know, you, you have basically what, you know, 90 days till... Yeah, that's it. We're, we're more concerned about running out of time than we are about any... I think that this is, this is work that doesn't fall under the mandatory elements that yeah. are required by the state to be done. Yeah. Are, uh, you, are, you, are you in agreement, Mark? Yeah, that, 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 that stuff for the that grant, that, that structure is specific. This isn't that. Uh, we'll use some of it, don't get me wrong, but this isn't that. I, at least I never thought it was. I, I, I expected it to actually continue to go on. There may be, and we have not had this discussion I'm about to say, but you talking about your your subcommittees made me just wonder if there can become a possibility where these subcommittees also from this group on, and a separate thing can work on some of the things that they would like to see, but as a subcommittee, not as, as this, and then once a year, Come together and 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 put some recommendations together that just go for those recommendations. It'd be like having that sub area plan that Ken had talked about, a sub area group, so they have an input and ability to have some communications on some of those things. I get the right one idea. But see, with the sub uh, committee, uh, it doesn't take the staffing the same, and that would allow it to continue to move forward right. a little bit, but not let it get caught in this. In this, this is the combining and, and the fixing of some of the plans. But sure what hurt if you made some recommendations along the way when you're done, I, I think that's important. Right. And I think everybody's I don't know if everybody's understanding, but nobody's disagreeing with it, at least conceptually, we, we all know the different parties in their own property and different things. But we've started with we've kinda of had this at least I'm kind of at least what I'm promoting is always that we have this guiding thing that when we're looking at zoning and zoning changes that we're not down zoning anybody that we're looking at it all the way around to make sure we're not causing somebody. Uh, we don't want to do financial harm. Right. No. Exactly. Well, that's what to me means you're taking away yeah. property, right? right. Yes. Kind of and that is a concern. I, I, on the phone calls I get, that is a concern. But here's the way I'm looking at it in my head and my hope. We'll use Belfair for an example. If at the end of the day you have the two, two specific factions, we'll say uh, 
Jack Johnson and David Obert. Okay? They have competing interests at times and stuff like that. If they both sign on with the idea that it doesn't take anything, that's a great success. <coughs> right. But you know, as soon as one uh, you talk to one, they start worrying that the other one's going to try and cut cut me off the knees so my my property can't be be in the north, it's the same or it can't be in the it's south. The same we, we get them both to sign on, and then we know we've done it right. Yeah, it's, the same, as well. yeah, it's the same, you know, as individual property owners. You know, they, nobody, you know, nobody wants to see an unfair advantage one way or the other, right. basically. But we're we're having that at least in the back of our discussions, and and we've talked about it. So. I mean, from that standpoint, well, we just disagree on a number of different points. It's, mm -hmm. Our goal is to do no harm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what the commissioner just said, I could tell you some of the conversations I've had with them when they've called me, is I have no intention, but I'm just one vote, one yeah. person. But I have no intentions on passing something that's going to make it harder and, and more restrictive. That's not where I'm at with, uh, as a commissioner. My thing for the urban growth area is economic development. and. The whole idea is to make it more viable. Right. Uh, outside the area, that's a different story. But the urban growth areas, that is the place it's supposed to build. Well, you know, my philosophy personally mirrors that, that it should be as easy to develop inside the urban growth areas as possible, that the county needs to be easy to do business with and, you know, for to be able to make things happen. And the first part of that is putting the plan together so we know where those areas are and what it, you know, what's available to, to be developed. So I, I think we need to stay focused on that. In the back of our minds, at least from mine, is I look at the county, I look at the EGA, and what keeps always sticking in the back of my mind is even though you've been through boom times and bus times and at regular times, if you look at the aggregate of what's going on in the EJs versus the rest of the county, it's out of sync. Meaning, we're not somehow, especially in the last three years, it's there's no development. Yeah. To speak, I mean, there is some, but, yeah. but very, very slow. I mean, in Allen, it's never been slower in the 20 years I've been around the planet. And I mean, I'm counting your permits. Never been slower. In the last. Are you talking about housing? Housing permits. But any development in Allen. <laughs> well, I, yeah. well, I, know, I, you know, I think we have to be very different. Fair. Housing versus commercial Fair. development, two totally different I reasons agree. that somebody I wouldn't. Because I, I think that one of the things that we... Well, housing is going to drive commercial development, though. We got but the but we also have to put, I, I think, I think realistically, as a rural county or as a county that has a lot of rural area that's undeveloped, I think we have to be realistic that what would drive a person to move from Seattle and build in a city where you could have their... <laughs> One sure. acre, which, sure. which and what we did, we said no, no more one acre properties. Yeah. You're gonna have to have five acre minimum, thank right. you, <laughs> yeah, because that's real character. But you know, it, it is a tough sell to ask somebody to live in an urban area in a rural community. And so, is it is it because our development regulations are hard to deal with? Is it preferences of homes? I think the people you need to go talk to on that are Why? realtors, realtors. Well, realtors. This is funny because I, I see it as a realtor, I see it the other direction. It's so interesting uh, the dynamic of it. Uh, not that I have anything against me from Seattle. I'm thinking to myself, what would make somebody from Dehuya want to live in Belfair? You know, so that they have their services. Yeah, that was kind of an automatic thing when I think of <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> when I think of growth, they think of a population growth. So that's, and that's money, just that's how I think of money. Well, I think of it the same way, but housing is what drives commercial development. And we don't have anything really that suits housing especially in in Belfair. You know, what we need is some areas that are zoned specifically for residential and in a lot of it. When you look at Kitsap County next door to us, they but it's the it's real estate market's on fire. They have no place for anybody to buy at. But isn't that you know, those people will come here if and those builders will come here, which creates economic development. And we have a place for them to come, and a place that they know the development regulations are in place, and that they're certain, and that land is, is zoned and available. And we don't have any of that. <coughs> and that'll drive the commercial have growth. Adequate. Housing, housing land, residential land. I don't so. believe we do. Oh, we have to. But we've had plenty of people say our UGAs are oversized. <laughs> 
So it's definitely a uh, but at the same time opinion. <laughs> but at the same time, there, there's a mix between it because yeah. right now the places that are structured where it has to be these tiny little the old things, and you have to build that way instead of allowing them to be able to. I actually believe it or not, I like the idea of this. Let's let's say you're supposed to have uh, five per acre. I actually like have what? five five homes per acre that you have to have it. We'll just use that example. Let's consider but, urban density because that you know. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just using. We also you know, have the ten, but I'm just using this example. That in the beginning, to be able to do that, especially when you have several, you have to put the infrastructure and everything else. That's how that thing exists now. But if we allow them to be able to use two parcels at a time, but they have to initially plot it that way, that it could be a happy medium because eventually the land will yeah. will be what generates what gets built. You have ten parcels of land mm -hmm. that will start to, to 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 do it. In the beginning, there'll be maybe two houses that occur, but because of those, people heard they will go next to it. But uh, right now, you have to do all 10, or you have to do the infrastructure for all 10. You can't afford to build two. It no. just can't happen. No, even, you know, I've heard from my engineer, and, you know, like the water plan design, the storm water plans, and things like this, that even in, in Thurston County, where there is infrastructure, basically, you know, half of it at least, things happen. Where there is none, it's not happening easily. And I, I would guess that that's a similar thing. I mean, I know from just, Putting a, you know, between Marty and I putting, you know, 20, 200 feet of sewer in, you know, gravity yeah. to make it cheaper to build versus, you know, the grinder pump approach. Um, you know, it's, you're sinking a lot of money before you, I mean, Debbie and I always say we got a house in the ground. It's a house and a half in the ground before we even do anything. You know, so. But it's a lot easier, as you know, yeah. to, to do it. Uh, a 10 unit development yes. the two homes if you can get the sewer to the first two homes. Yes. You know, that's where the biggest outlay comes up. We now have, a, because of you, uh, which is a good thing, we have a latecomer process yeah. in place. That, but it's just getting that initial, that initial part. But the way we've got designed right now, you don't have that as an option. No. You do it all or you do not. Right. And that means you do not. Because so are you, are you talking about that as a zoning issue or as an infrastructure investment issue? Zoning issue. But, but anyway, the bottom line is, <laughs> our concern is one, I guess, to the, you know, the board is that, you know, this is going to be a little bit, even trying to get the zoning code to match up is, it'll be tough. Is, I mean, it'll happen. I think it'll happen. Um, I don't see anybody like the good old days where they dug in their heels and just, it was not going to happen. What I'm wondering is if this is, and, and this is a wild, crazy idea. <laughs> Commissioner Nedlin and I both, and I think Commissioner Shelton agree, that we've all have this very strong distaste for the allowed uses approach in zoning, sure. and would prefer to see us move to the unallowed uses or disallowed uses. Would, when you talk about the zoning code issues, I, 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 allowed uses is one issue, and sure. the density is another one. Yeah. I'm wondering if, if this might be a, a, a way to approach that. At least, you know, it's kind of a weird incrementally thing. by, 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 by weird. taking these two zoning codes and talking and, and, and taking out the moving it to a, a, a not a lot of uses. Right. It's a weird. It's a weird thing. On the one hand, I, I agree with you. The concept of a lot of uses is a problem. But it, when you're discussing and arguing points and trying to beat it, you know, out of each other, how you're going to do it, you almost need those allowed uses to, as a framework how to steer through this thing. Well, right now especially, I, I agree with you, Commissioner, uh, that it is needed, but I think it's two separate things. Again, I don't think it can be done together. I think the fight would be huge. I think what we need to do is, is eventually somehow find a way to put something together and start to do it. Once it's changed, then whatever rules that are set up can be adapted. So I guess I'm not quite sure what you mean by zoning code trying to mesh the zoning codes together. What, what, well, where's the problem going to be? The problem is in the allowed uses. Oh, it is this issue. Okay. It is the allowed uses, okay. but I'm saying it's a weird thing. So maybe we won't be able to go there? Not this time. Words, I think it's had, as much as it creates friction, it allows people to discuss it and know what they're saying and be able to argue a point. Meaning, they know this is allowed use, and not you know, and then you know, and they can we can argue how we're going to make it work. With yeah, in this zone, you can do this, and this, and this. I don't think there's anything wrong with mean, us. What, what happens is we, we we don't know what to do with this brand new 
use that nobody ever even contemplated. We never know what to do with pork burgers. I don't know if it's allowed. Sure. <laughs> We've never had pot plants be ever, or well, pot marijuana processors or whatever. We haven't, got, we haven't got to, but the same thing was like, you know, with Airbnbs, you know, Airbnbs and stuff like yeah. that. I, always, yeah. I have them on my list, but that's to me future and the issue I felt more based upon your you know, resolution was try to hammer out and then you know if we can dovetail it in, fit it in, great. I don't think there's well, any issue with us telling them. Just a last minute. You know what? <laughs> sure, I don't think there's any issue with us telling them that's what we'd like to go. And then they use that in their sure. in their thought process oh, as, well, as well. they're doing sure. it. Because I, 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 I think that is where we want to go. Uh, we just not to get there. I don't think this is the avenue to get there, but it should be nice if you guys can plan for it while you're doing these we things. We could get there, but it's just time. And yeah. I, that's the only point. I mean, that's it. We're just worried about Well, and we can't, we can't put that on, the, on that committee to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't see this work as being a mandating time to use or, or, or work. Well, you know, I think what she's doing, what, what Barbara's doing in, in the more generic sense is, is what... I'm yeah, she's got more stuff well, to do than... Just well, no, about. I disagree with her a little bit on that yeah. one because... I'd love to have something by the end of the year to start to move forward. It doesn't have to be everything, but I'd love to start to move through the process to, to making those changes and not just... Well, you don't want a four-year committee? <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't want a six-year S&P? No, they, six they don't want a six-year S&P? And, 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 and make, and, and well, make recommendations. But I'd like to have some good recommendations <laughs> earlier so we can get the book before planning <laughs> and have it be a living thing that could come up with even more after you have a... Uh, <laughs> before, before oh, was, I'm sorry. You don't want to be, okay. Yeah. Before the uh, commission moves off, people knew they had to be on this for four I'm years. Not, be fewer. I'm not, you know, as far as the scope of time, okay. But I also believe in goals and objectives. I mean, one thing about a goal is you have to have time. So I think. To have too much time is not good because we don't. You, you're all yeah, because then you don't get anything. Done. So, so there's got to be some happy medium. Can you come in for a request uh, for an uh, uh, extra amount of time that you'd like for this particular thing and perhaps think about and talk to your committee about afterwards having it extended as a different type well, of Well, you know, maybe that, that's the something. thing we should do. Let's, you know, we have a meeting coming up here next week. Maybe what we should do is just say, here's what we think. This is a direction we've been given by the commission. Here's what we think we can accomplish by here. But what, you know, what do you guys think about extending this from June to say September, whatever? Would and then us come back to you and say, here's what we think we can do in this time frame. Would you be open, that Commissioner, if uh, at that point they come back, and yes, it does, but let's say they come back with that, would you be open to the conversation about extending that further to allow that subcommittee to start to put together some stuff for ideas of what they would like to see in the long term? Or? Words. <laughs> <laughs> you have it in your head, yeah, but I don't. They, they couldn't have a subcommittee to actually look at the comprehensive sub-area plan uh, if they don't have a committee to have a subcommittee of. Right. I agree. So. And what we need from you guys is a commitment that staff can actually help us without overloading on other stuff, too. Good luck. <laughs> oh, well, part of it's just like hey, this. If you don't ask, the answer's always no. Yeah. 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 I, I made it because we uh, did with a comp plan. So I looked at the, all these things we did ten, you know, 10 years ago and then talked to the committee and then you know, made a request and said, okay, can we get the edible documents for the comp plans? And we'll work out the round robin to work through the committee at the different points and identify what the problems are. Just like in between Bonnie and I working in Allen We we thought, I thought it would be simple as she pointed out a few things and I got into it and it's like, Ooh, <laughs> there is more. And I'm not, I'm not, when it's all said and done, even though her and I might be on different pages on issues, I think we're like 98% there. It, there'll be a couple of things we'll argue and the committee will be able to take you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that could be a chasm. Well, well, no, yeah. <laughs> the rest is of all the dis, di, the rest different of the will buy off because they're all chomping at the bit to work on Belfair. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the biggest problems you also have is ownership of the words. And that's yes. what, that's what we're trying to overcome now because yeah. mm -hmm. some of those things didn't work. Yes. And so we have people on the committee that were there back then and they have ownership of that and they need to not. In this time, it's but time it, to... But at least what I'm seeing is some, at least in, in the sub area of the sub area plan of Allen, there is some flexibility we look at. I'm 
purposely with me looking at it, saying, okay, I agreed to this, you know, 10, 12 years ago. I was wrong. It did not work out. Like this thing on the you know, the business above, or the residential above, it did not work. And, and, and the allowed uses in yes. certain, certain zoning districts. And I get worried about that. Right, so. and I have, and I have a I'm problem. I'm sorry, you can't have a hamburger place here because it's only dentist offices. I caught the frosting on the cake of this whole process. I already, because you know, you were working on a committee last summer creating this, you know, made the motion for the board to create this. Not long time allowed. I started working some of the things I wanted to see change. I worked up a whole plan of how I was going to approach the zoning code. And then I asked Barbara, am I right? You know, this is doing on overlays. We had passwords. We were giving more capability to an overlay than an overlay should have been restricting. And so that totally gutted my approach. And so, you know, I'm rebuilding it, coming up with a new approach. but. But for example, we have people, we have a, a commercial zone. Some people actually want to make sure they stay commercial, but they're like, it's like you know, I'm trying to say it, but there's no development occurring because no residential in that area. Okay, so yeah, your there's question no development. Was, when they came back and asked for potentially an extension with a very kind of scope of work, did they also ask for what? Uh, after they come back with a finished product. Oh, for, what for, for this other, the idea that we might want to consider extending that group if they want to, to continue on and allow them to continue looking at other parts of the same issue under the same resolution. Other parts of the same issue the, to find other, to still continue to look at things for, for unification of codes and stuff. But with the idea that they can also have an extended look so they can start to go into a sub area planning uh, locally and have, you know, just. just a sub a subgroup to be able to have that conversation put something forward. They may even consider And that's all these questions that are That would be all these. For example, do you mind if I go ahead and jump on these questions real quick and just answer them from me, my point of view? Well not it's not this group that's looking Well no, oh, that's, okay. no that's, okay. what, that's what the questions would be. Well it's no. Okay. <laughs> They're all no. Yeah. Are we to look at the plan and, and, and the sub area plans? Yes, you're to look at them. You know, that's part of the, yeah. the, the whole job. Are you to look at population allocations? I wouldn't see how that's that has anything to do with what we're doing in this. But if you continue to have your, I do, but that's okay. Yeah, but if you continue yeah. to, I'm just telling you my opinion. Yeah. You know, for 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 how to, to be able to do to do this for the codes or unification of the codes. For um, unification of codes, no. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking okay. about because that's what I'm talking that, about that's what fine. that's what you're mm -hmm. tasked to do. But now, if if it continues to be able to look at a comp plan or something in your plan, yeah. that'd be a different story. Well, uh, I have to stop you right there. Yeah. But Barbara, you are going to coming to us asking about. She's uh, coming with you. You're going to give us population right. allocation right. So, so 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 we will be asking. And we'll be looking at what you plan on yeah. answering answering that she, question about how much population goes. And she gave us. An and you'll also tell us whether or not there is room to meet those. You know the size and boundaries piece. Oh, there's a room. <laughs> I guarantee it. So, so, so she doesn't even have, I mean, as a lay person, noting the rules when you're allocating population with, with, to cover all the years, okay. there is more room there in both UJAs. And uh, are we to look at the size and boundaries of, and recommended adjustments? I think yes, that's part of the code. And, and so, but yeah. not, not adjustments of the UGA on zoning. On that, that's part okay. of zoning. But, if you decide, or if we decide, uh, combine to allow it to go further as a summary plan, that might be discussions to be had at that time. Sure. Uh, if we don't make the recommendations, who will? Uh, all kinds of different people, all different areas and stuff. Everybody that calls you up. That's right, right. yeah. <laughs> will the uh, BSCC consider changes to the plans and sub area plans to bring consistency? Uh, in a sense, that's kind of what we're asking for. That is the crux of everything. Um, if, there are, if there are to be any proposed zoning changes, Will that bring a moratorium to my to uh, any proposed projects and those affected? Depends on your recommendation. Sure. <laughs> so we'll see what you recommend and then what staff says at that point. Uh, but you you would agree that if, if the if the guideline in our thing is where we're not down down zoning somebody. And I don't want a moratorium. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, 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 no. I understand. Yeah, so. But gen generally speaking, I mean, I can see the other situations, but generally, we should be in the right direction. But I also think with that question also has to be if it is found to be 
that we believe that it may lead to that, show us the code, show us the research, sure, sure. Uh, and, and make absolutely positive that that's an accurate statement. Um, flexibility to address uh, density issues, liability for commercial versus residential development. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think there, that's a question you guys answered. Yeah, I think that's absolutely that's, that's there. Uh, what are the infrastructure needs? I don't think that's, I think it's something to talk about if you decide to have a sub uh, committee. But in this, the needs, uh, what, what we're not going to throw in a bunch of money and say we're going to put roads in right now. Uh, but you do have to consider it when you're talking about usage of lands, yeah. but only to, to that extent. And then. Uh, so, so, so huh. just worry about what infrastructure is on the ground now. Right now, you're working on the plan itself that we have. And we do have planned infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, do. we do have planned. Right. Right. You know, how many years out, we don't know. But we do have planned infrastructure. Right. And so a lot of it can, you know, be precipitated on when this finally right. gets put in. This right. When the sewer mainline it's, goes. You know, to me, this is just not my opinion. Our capital facilities don't adequately reflect our... No, we have a ten. As long as I'm on yeah. record to say we have the worst kind okay. of this, is, and, that, and, that, and somebody shows up to tell them what's in it. And, as, it show up. and my only issue, why and maybe people have said I've dug the hole in too deep on this approach, is I keep seeing things from C you know, from the uh, Department of Commerce where they talk about the different rulings and different things, and they talk about the 20-year plans, and, and it looks like a lot of the things that where you get into trouble is if you try to promise too much. Mm -hmm. And don't do it. And so they're talking about what are you going to do in, in 20 years? And I'm, I'm looking at 10, I wait where it was normal, boom, bust, normal, or quasi normal, and saying, okay, how, you know, are we really on target? We have to be mindful of it, but that's going to be our responsibility and our problem. We're the ones that have to look at whatever your recommendations are and see if they're workable and if we can. No, no, I, I understand, but that, that's where I start digging when some people say, you know, when they dug a hole in a little too deep, you know. Yeah. That's me in the area of infrastructure. Yeah, he, 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 I know. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> we're, we're, in other words, I'm concerned about how we allocate zoning and population based upon the capital facilities we have, and I can go deep. And the problem is that drives everybody else nuts because they're not that far into it. To, to, it becomes very confusing. Right. Well, I, so I totally agree with you, um, especially with the level of service of the roads in the urban growth areas. But on the stuff that you're dealing with now, why. it's not going to have that impact. Oh. That's, that's the only difference. Can, I, can I say one thing? Yeah. Um, I think originally the resolution talked about reviewing the sub-area plans and the development regulations. Sub-area plans came before the development regulations. That's why it's so important that we, I think, that we look at those sub-area plans because they need they need some change, um, Belpair in particular. Uh, the plans themselves are outdated. So, that's all. No, and I and I understand that, and that's why I was talking about. But in this particular thing, it's but, not that. But if, if they put together I think something, we need to do. I think we need to do it now to, in order to make good development regulations um, and recommendations. We need to look at those plans now. On the resolution. That section you read about where we review the plans and the regulations, are you saying we do not want to make any changes to the plans? Yeah. You make it right. Yeah. But yeah. But don't spend your time going through it and, and recreating I mean, yeah, the whole. I, to me, it seemed like it would be an ancillary thing you discovered as you're working on, on what was requested. Okay. And, and if you find that, you know what, we found an oddity here and things, so. So, 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 so uh, I'm prioritizing so we know how to address that in the committee. What I hear you saying, I think I understand what you're saying, is that the zoning regulations are where it is really where you're pushing. You're going to review the plan, but don't spend a ton of time in the edit the plan yet, at this point. But if you, I mean, there's definitely parking lot no, issues. No, 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 okay, okay. I'm, and I'm not trying to put, I'm trying to understand so yeah. I can communicate. We just don't want to be confused. We just want to be sure we understand what you want. We just don't want to be confused and, and, and you guys think that you are the sub-area planning committee that, you know, that you did 10, 12 years ago and were reconstituted. That's not what this is. Right, I got, I got that. And, yeah. you know, although it may be necessary, and I'll call Ken later and talk about it, yes, it may be necessary, that's not what this is. Right. And okay. in order to do that, that's going to take a lot more effort, a lot more staff, a lot more time. 
And if you guys are willing to do it as a subcommittee, then we may have an opportunity to get there. Well, you probably will get an update to the Allen one, just because we're trying to make it work and make sure yeah, we're pretty close to it. Well, I don't say close. No, we're really close. But we know what's wrong, <laughs> and we think we know what to update. And like I said, we can get it within 98%. Yeah, close to I, I have no problem that you guys have some of that stuff, but the only thing I worry about, again, is when that time comes, there will be those that will be upset because it wasn't a total yeah. public process. Well, at some point, it depends on how big those changes are. If they're no-brainers to me, I have no issue with that. But some people, well, that's why you guys make the big bucks. But I don't see why we deal with that. It would be a public process if, it, if, if those recommendations came to the sure. Well, it depends on some of the stuff. For example, I know some of Ken's and what Ken, Ken wants to have. And, you know, no, I love him. I'm just telling you, I, uh, I do know some of that stuff. That's, that's a lot more comprehensive. You know, yeah. I remember we had a couple planning commission meetings in Belfair when I was on the planning commission. Maybe it means we're in yeah. meetings to Belfair and very sure. Belfair specific or mm -hmm. Allen specific yeah. issues. Yeah. And that's what I'm. That's what it would take to do some of the bigger. But it might be a good idea. We'll, we'll, yeah, I, I agree. But can you do that within this? It's just, it's just when now? you get. So yeah. what I, 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 I struggle with is when you have a bunch of effort put on a subcommittee level or. A, a special advisory committee level, yeah. and then it bumps up to another advisory <laughs> committee level, yeah. and it bumps up to the commissioners. All the chances of it getting torpedoed and or diluted and or this wasn't what I originally thought or or what what are you handing me here? I have a different idea of what I want to do when I'm doing it. And, and we you know we fought with that when we did Allen's way back when, okay? Because we were concerned as a, a charitable nonprofit doing the planning. You know, for a community, and then bring it to the uh, to your planning commission, and then eventually to the board, you know, and also going through staff, and then the board. Um, to me, I don't know. I'm always kind of hierarchical nature, meaning, okay, you, you create the committee, you work on the things, and then at level one, it runs into a bunch of problems. Maybe the commission looks a little, you know, overview just to see what's happening, but if not, then back down, and see what, because we're not all knowing. I mean, the planning commission gets into a bunch of things too. And also, the planning commission is not ongoing. So, uh, well, then we also have to work with the planning commission's time yeah. to be able to move these things in and out of theirs. Because they have the shoreline master plan, they have the comprehensive well, plan, the full, full the, right, and, and, and trying to get them to do it. And we have to be mindful that we're putting all this together. So, if you bring in a full, you know, new <laughs> sub area plan, that's going to be a lot harder to get through than we can imagine. We still yeah. have to be able to do it. Whatever we do, we we may, have, yeah, you still got to be able to do it. If we can't do it. Then so you've, you've seen the schedule that Public Works has put out? The transportation element. Okay. Do you feel that, you feel that's, I mean, when I look at it, it's moving right along. It's bang, 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 bang. There's, you know, it has all the proper amount of time, but it's bang, 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 bang. So if you add our committee, just say, because what stands in the back of my mind is that thing, that document comes before TIPCAP on May. And we have three meetings between now and then, and it'll be interesting how much we can get, you know, wrapped up. Let's just say we, you know, we can walk on water and make it happen. But that's so about the transportation element. Yeah. Okay, you know that we hired a consultant. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I know, but I'm talking about all the us people, and, you know, TIPCAP people, your planning commission, you know, your 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 times, all the reviews and all the you know the two-week comment periods and all that kind of stuff. All of a sudden, it's out there. You know, getting the end of you know June or whatever it was, whatever the date was. I'm just saying, if we were ready right now, are we going to fit? If we had to do something like like May 1st, and I don't mean you, but I'm just saying the county, I mean going through staff, going through you know the various levels it goes through. Would it? I mean, okay. I, heard, I see her head shaking. I, I don't know why you're asking that question. It's not going to be done anyway. It's not part of the mandatory elements. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about the zoning, the stuff we, this stuff we are going to do. Right, but it's not part of the mandatory element of the update. Okay. That's Never why, mind. That's why, for, for me, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say is I'd like to see you guys get this part done. And, the, you know, if you need a little more time, that's fine. But, you know, this is a longer process. Okay, I'm, it doesn't I'm, just there's end. A, there's because a little, the, that grant, that grant is actually not that big. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know that. But I yeah. <laughs> I just wanted. Okay, I think I understand something I didn't understand. 
before. And that's why I say there's yeah. a possibility for stuff on the subarea plan. A larger part of it and stuff like that. So when and we're not and we're not obligated to do yeah. everything. You can understand yeah. that, um, but not many people do understand that. <laughs> Don't I, touch I, that plan for ten years. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I hear people telling me you can't. Yeah, this is your one time. Yeah. It's got to be open by now, and if you don't go, yeah. that, they're wrong. That's yeah. not accurate. Huh? So, for the mandatory part, in your minds, what do you see us doing? I don't think you have a role. It's mandatory in our mind. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, in my, my role, what I see is that you guys have an, at least a good, huge batch of recommendations in the next month or two uh, that we can at, start to start our process on. Because whatever you put together, we still got to do something with it. Yeah, we need to beat this out and figure out a structure. Yeah. Because I, I don't. I okay. I'm fairly involved, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not up to speed, and so. <laughs> I'm, well, even I'm if you get seventy-five percent, and you say to us, you know, we'd sure like to have some more time to look at the other twenty. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I'm hoping will happen, as long as we keep in mind that staff is expensive. And just yeah, no problem. problem. No problem. And yeah, okay. Because I still want to do it right. No, no, me, me too. I don't want. I don't want to go through another thing like we did before, where we, you know, we had there's delays and you know, where everything was on hold for years after years after years. But you remember it. Time frame. I can't remember the years now, but you know, the early 2000s, it seemed like we had all kinds of problems. And I don't want to go to that. I don't, I don't want to. No, easy. We can't be Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want. I don't want good things that can cause the potential for wanting people wanting to make it. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> well, thank you for the clarification. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for coming in here, Dad. I thank you for your work. And one other thing I saw in these minutes that I was not quite sure what. Oh, okay. oh Jack wanted to change his. No, never mind. Never mind. You guys, you got it. Andrew, you know what you're doing. <laughs> you're going for it. It's like everybody has the same idea. Okay, well, thanks for taking time to yes. listen in. And I. Appreciate you know, the most people in the last five minutes. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it restructures my mind a little bit to say, okay. Well, there's a big light bulb back here. I can see it going on. Yeah. Can you see it, Pat? Yeah, I did. It's pretty frightening. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. No, just in closing.